Hi, um, today's the last day of February 2021 and I want to come to you with a message, something that has been burning on my heart for some time. I wanted to write, but I think that video will do it better. You see, um, somewhere last week, I visited a friend who is going through a very difficult time and um, she had a call from someone she calls Christian mother. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Christian mother. And um, I, as a journalist, my ears are very sharp. My eyes, my nose, here. Yeah, so I pick up things easily. I could hear this person on the phone telling my friend that um, she's a failure because she's being divorced and, um, you know, her honor and glory has been taken away from her. She's lost her honor and glory. And I was just wondering, you see, such messages are lies from the pit of hell. But unfortunately, we Christian women are being told this over and over again, and we are dying for things that we are not supposed to die for. We know the message of Christ coming to die. Is we are in Lent, we are going to into Easter to commemorate the death of Christ. That painful death that signifies He coming to save us. So when you hear the message, of by your stripes you are healed. He took away all our sins, all our pains, all our infirmities, all our shame. He took it all for us on the cross so that we can be saved. Christian woman, you are saved from that abuse. You are saved from that humiliation that you're suffering in your relationship. And you must not let anybody make you feel any less. Listen, let's take it, yes. The man is the head of the family, according to the Bible. Our pastors preach it all the time. Fine. Isn't it the head of the family who is to ensure that the family unit stays together, that everything goes on well? So why is it that when the marriage doesn't work, the woman is blamed? And I think it's a shame that most of the time, it is we Christians who blame the woman. Why? In the Garden of Eden, according to the Bible, God gave dominion, gave Adam dominion over the rivers and the trees and whatever it is, before he created us, the women. He put Adam to sleep before he created us. So what he put in us is a mystery to the man. My dear Christian, what God put in you, it will not take a man to bring it out. It will take you. It will take God. Stop allowing yourself to be kept in bondage. I'm not preaching about divorce. No, 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 no. Marriage is beautiful. It's enjoyable. It's a sense of pride and, you know, exciting and everything. But what I am telling you this morning is that, yes, God hates divorce, according to the Bible. But you know what? He told the man not to grieve the heart of his wife because God hates the divorce. Because God knows that when the man grieves the heart of his wife, divorce is bound to happen. We all have our threshold. We all have what we can contain and what we can. So I'm here not to judge anybody. I believe in choices that we make. But what I am angry about today is the fact that we put so much pressure on the Christian woman. Her husband is beating, abusing her. He said, go and pray. Go and pray? Really? Dear Christian woman, yes, you believe that the man is the head of the family. But guess what? You have direct access to the head of that man. That is Jesus Christ. That is God. That is the Holy Spirit. You have direct, like every process, being in institution, being in a church or whatever, there is a chain of command. Let's take it like that. So you've talked about it to the man he didn't listen. You've talked to his family. You've complained to the church. Nothing is changing. You go direct to his boss, your boss. You have direct access to God. Speak to God directly. It is God who makes you and cannot make you. It is not the man. Dear Christian woman, this morning I want you to know this. What God has got for you is not based on you being married or having children or being divorced or 
you know, not having what society thinks you must have. What God has got for you, he will give it to you irrespective. God didn't give conditions to you being saved, you being blessed. Oh, and another one, <laughs> according to the Bible, he who finds a way, finds a good thing and obtains favor. <laughs> Woman, you are the favor. You have got favor before the man came. And you give favor to the man. So please, please, if you're in an abusive relationship, if you're in a relationship that you're being demeaned and you want to stay in there, I do not judge you. It is your decision. I mean, there's a saying in Akan, Ubi Krani, Yami no When we were being sent down to earth, the conversations we have in private with God, nobody knows about it. But what I want you to know and understand that, do not allow yourself to be manipulated using the Bible to make you feel that you are less of a woman if you are not married. You are less of a woman if you don't have a child. You are less of a woman if you are divorced or being divorced. You are not. You've got all it takes. God blessings upon you will not depart from you. Because of what you paid. Because of divorce. You are going through pain. Do not allow people to put you down. Do not allow people to put you down. And it's about time we speak up as Christians against this abuse from the pulpit. This abuse from the pulpit. Marriage is partnership. So why the blame always on the woman? A woman who is going through such painful divorce, so broken, with her children, doesn't know what to do. And the Christian mother, and Christian fathers, spiritual mothers and fathers, telling her that she, she, she's no more worthy. She's lost her glory. Because she's divorced. Who made them God of us? Who made anyone God of us? Pastors are divorcing and remarrying. Yes, I'm a bit angry this morning. Pastors are divorcing and remarrying. That is okay. But if a woman is divorced, she hasn't got the right. She's lost her glory. She's lost her favor. She's lost her grace. How? Does it even make sense to the people who do this to the women? Anyway, this is a sermon that is not preached in churches most of the time. But this Sunday morning, the last day of February 2021, I am just tired and fed up of what we do to women who are divorced or going through divorce. Women who are daring to walk out of relationship because they are being abused and they can't handle it anymore. I am tired. So I'm here to tell you that woman, you've got what it takes. It is your decision. It is between you and God. You still have favor. You still have glory. You still have honor. And God will use you and give you what he has for you. Irrespective of whatever happens. So do not be afraid. Be encouraged. Be empowered. Hold on to your God. You have direct access to him. Your prayers to God is not through the man. He created you. And when he was creating you, he put the man to sleep. It is between you and your God. Do not let society abuse you the second time after all that you've been through. Enough is enough. Love yourself. Love yourself for the God you serve, you serve is a love. So you represent love. Love yourself. Appreciate yourself. And trust God that he can use you irrespective of whatever your circumstances are. And I repeat, your glory will not depart from you. Amen.
His glory will not depart from you. His grace will be upon you. His favor is upon you. I'm a woman with super crazy faith in God. I know God has got us covered, but he has given us wisdom. Dear Christian woman, apply wisdom. Do not die in misery. Do not let abuse kill you and destroy you and make you even lose your contract, your relationship with God. Or because somebody is telling you that God hates divorce. And you, the woman, you are the responsible solely for keeping their home. And so when you are divorced, that means you are a failure. You are not a failure. You are not. From lack of knowledge, my people perish. Christian woman, we shall not perish. From today onwards, we shall read the Bible ourselves and we shall go to the source directly and empower ourselves in God. God bless you. God bless you. And may the coming months be a blessing for failing. Keep safe. Keep protected.